to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Sipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. It's good to be back. A little, uh, just a little week break there at the beginning of uh, January, but uh, we're back. Kentucky Derby Trail is rolling. Yeah, about three and a half months, a little, just over three and a half months, Matt, till the Kentucky Derby. So we are talking... These are actually our first uh, uh, individual rankings of the year of the season this year. So we look forward to uh, going over all these new exciting horses, some of the more established two-year-olds, but also some of the horses that folks you might not know about here on our Kentucky Derby rankings. I'm going to let Matt start with his top 12, number one, Matt. Uh, We've talked about this horse before. I know you like him a lot. Who's your number one? My number one is Smile Happy. And I must say that this, uh, in recent years, I can't recall a year where uh, things seem to be so wide open, much more wide open, no no dominant uh, uh, favorite, um, so many horses to consider. Uh, Even at this point, as you mentioned, Brian, three and a half months to go, 117 or 16 days or so, uh, I guess you could say, oh, that's plenty of time, but uh, I don't know about that. But anyway, back to Smile Happy, uh, Kenny McPeak. Uh, uh, I think we're going to talk about him a number of times uh, between our lists. Uh, Son of Run Happy uh, just has really, uh, really looked impressive. Um, that big win in the Jockey Club Gold Cup uh, really cemented him as a contender. To me, he looks like a horse that's got plenty of room to improve, bounced out of that Kentucky Jockey Club really well. He's back working already and uh, aiming for the Southwest at Oakland Park at the end of the month. Yeah, it's been a while since Kenny McPeak has made a real run at the Kentucky Derby. He's had some good fillies of late. Uh, of course, he had some Kentucky Derby success, at least uh, finishing uh, close to the win in years past. Uh, I remember Teano run, of course, years ago. Some people would say, Matt, uh, what are you, crazy? Smile Happy is a son of a sprint champion, Run Happy. But uh, I think we both see a lot of uh, distance pedigree, uh, both whether it be from the run happy side or, of course, the other side where they have that Buckland Farm uh, long distance pedigree. Yeah, I liked what I saw, too. I have him high on my list as well, Matt. I look good at Keeneland and his maiden, and he looked good at Churchill Downs, as you mentioned, in that grade two Kentucky Jockey Club. Now, two for two, smile happy. Can't blame you for having him number one on your list at all, Matt. Uh, My number one, I think is going to be a surprise. It's it's so much so, Matt, that you don't even have this horse on your list. I really like Slow Down Andy. Slow Down Andy, uh, I think is a lot of, uh, uh, is a horse that a lot of people don't have on their Kentucky Derby rankings yet. But uh, Doug O'Neill, a son of Nyquist, I, I really liked what I saw when he won this maiden. Peter's Cup weekend, he, he ran, ran into a tough sprint, a big field. He pressured a fast pace and uh, hung on pretty well, but he got beat that day. But then he came back with some nice odds uh, in the Los Alfuturity, the grade two Los Alfuturity late last year. I think he beat a good horse, Messier. And Matt, I think he did just about everything wrong in the race as well. Uh, breaking slow, going, uh, go, dropping to last on a slow pace, lugging in badly, looking out into the stands uh, much of the stretch. But he still beat a good horse in Messier. They were far ahead of the rest. I think slow down Andy is for real, Matt Shipman. Yeah, uh, son of Nyquist, Doug O'Neill, uh, both good things, uh, both great uh, derby pedigrees with that sire, former winner of the derby, and O'Neill, two-time winner of the derby. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't blame you, Brian. I just, you know, uh, uh, had had so many horses to consider, I just didn't put him in. And another one that I think is also considering that Southwest uh, at Oakland Park. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where the California bread goes next. Uh, I see some uh, 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 a little bit of I'll have another in him who Doug O'Neill trained. I see a little bit of California Chrome, another uh, uh, very talented California bread. We'll see if I'm right about slow down Andy, but he's my number one. Smile happy. Your number one is actually number two. I, I do like the run happy. Uh, and I see that Nick Peak has a strong barn of two-year-olds this year, Matt. Uh, who is your number two? 
Number two, I'm I'm McPeak again here, Brian, with uh, Rattle and Roll, who did really did really good things relatively early on uh, in on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Uh, a very impressive uh, victory in the Breeders' Futurity. A uh, son of the young sire, Connect. Uh, this is another one uh, that McPeak has that's got talent. Another one that I think can handle the distance. I must admit. Um, I, I am a little bit concerned, and, and I'll say this about a couple other horses that are going to show up either in your uh, uh, top 12 or my top 12, uh, that this guy has not been back on the work tab yet. I know we said, I said it before, three and a half months, but not that much time uh, that starts leaving very little room for uh, error. Yeah, three and a half months is a long time. But you got to remember, these are young horses trying to run a mile and a quarter the first Saturday in May. And that is a unique experience, especially when you consider how big the field is at Churchill Downs for the run for the roses. So, yeah, Matt's right. Uh, you, you can't really have too much hiccups along the, uh, along the way. Rattle and Roll needs to start going again. Interesting, uh, the, the, you know, not the, the biggest name, certainly, freshman sire from last year. But Connect is an interesting young sire to me. Rattle and Roll looked really good. Uh, he uh, he had some trouble in his second race. He rallied in his first race. He didn't finish his second race, but uh, the last two have been really good, including that Breeders' Futurity where he just uh, powered by a pretty good field uh, at Keeneland uh, late last fall. Of course, he was forced to miss the Breeders' Cup. Uh, the next horse on my list, Matt, wasn't forced to miss the Breeders' Cup. He won the Breeders' Cup. And uh, this is interesting because Matt and I went different ways with this. So, of course, as of now, Churchill Downs has, train, uh, has banned trainer Bob Baffert from running in the Kentucky Derby. His, horse, his horses aren't getting points. Um, I'm choosing to, to include um, Baffert horses. And you'll see most sports books uh, around the world, or I guess all sports books other than the Churchill Downs Future Wager, which, of course, is run by Churchill Downs are including Baffert horses right now. Matt, I just have a feeling that one way or the other, whether it be a uh, reversal of the ban or, uh, or, or even a late move to other trainers, I just have a feeling like these Baffert horses, if they really deserve, deserve to run or show that they deserve to run in the Derby, will be in the Kentucky Derby. But you feel a little differently. Yeah, I do, um, Brian. I'm a little tired of the whole thing. And bottom line for me is that that, that that's where it stands right now with Churchill Downs, uh, saying Baffert's horses are not running, so I am not including them on my list. I got plenty of other horses that I'd like to include. If in fact that changes, um, in terms of uh, 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 Churchill Downs reversing that decision, or if you said Brian uh, uh, Corniche or any of the others end up moving to another trainer, then I will go back and and take a look at whether I want to include them in my uh, future top 12s or not. But right now, um, for me, that, that was a, a simple, simple decision. Matt's taking a stand. I think they'll end up running and I think Corniche needs to be on my list. Uh, Son of Quality Road, of course, was a $1.5 million purchase. So uh, uh, he was meant to be a good horse and uh, people saw something in him early on. And Corniche, I think, uh, lived up to those high expectations as a two-year-old. He's three for three. Uh, he went back and forth between Del Mar, Santa Anita, and Del Mar to do it. The only two-time grade one winner on the list, of course, he won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, it wasn't an easy thing for him. He made it look pretty easy, but he had to come from the far outside post to go out there and get the lead. And once he did, he pretty much controlled the race once again, three for three, hard to knock Corniche, who will be named two-year-old champion uh, very soon. Matt, who's number three on your list? Number three on my list is Papa Cap. And we talked about earlier in the show uh, that, you know, these are horses that, you know, have to go a mile and a quarter, have to face a big field. So uh, Papa Cap, although uh, doesn't have uh, uh, big wins, has a lot of experience and, and we come to expect that from runners from the barn of Mark Cassie. Uh, and, and that kind of experience uh, goes a long way down the Derby trail and getting to the Derby and the other uh, Triple Crown classics. Uh, Papa Cap uh, was second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. 
uh, and in the American Pharaoh has been working plenty since that Breeders' Cup, of course, for a Cassie horse with a really, really quick, impressive uh, five furlong uh, run at fairgrounds the other day with the Lecomte in mind on January 22nd. Yeah, Papa Cap's looking like he might be one of the most experienced horses in the Kentucky Derby starting to get whether when he does make it, Matt. And, and I could see why you would have this horse so high in my list, your list, my list. He's a little bit lower, uh, but I have a lot of respect for Papa Cap. And it used to be where horses like this sh showed a foundation, maybe came out a little bit earlier in their two year old year, had uh, had had a leg up, if you will, on the Kentucky Derby uh, come the May of their three year old season. It hasn't quite been the same lately, but uh, you have to respect all the foundation Papa Cap has. I'm not sure what kind of horse he is, whether he's a horse who wants to be really close or wants to come off the pace. I don't feel like he's gotten the best of trips uh, when Corniche has beaten him rather easily the last two times, but uh, still he finished the Breeders' Cup Juvenile well. He was second best there. And uh, Gunrunner Matt is a horse that you have up and down your list I've seen here. So uh, obviously uh, uh, if this horse can be a little bit like that to great freshman sire, uh, gun runner, uh, Papa Cap will uh, do well, it, whether it be this spring or later on. Matt, who's number four on your list? Number four on my list is Mo Donegal, the winner of the Remsen at Aqueduct, who has since um, uh, gone down to Florida to train for uh, Todd Pletcher, a son of Uncle Mo, as his name uh, 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 hints at. Um, was a nice winner of that Remsen in what was one of the best runnings of the Remsen in a number of years to me has the look of a horse that uh, uh, can get the distance, can get better, um, and is uh, already back in training at uh, Pletcher's base in Florida, Palm Beach Downs. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to Uncle Moe's being a little bit more uh, precocious, a little bit more brilliant. And this horse does look like He's a horse who wants a distance, so I'm not sure what to make of him. I did like the Remsen. I, I like the Remsen more than other races, although I, I thought the horse that he beat in the Remsen was the horse for me moving forward that I, I liked even better. His name is Zandon. We're going to talk about him a little bit uh, very soon here. Uh, I, Matt, you have a bunch of McPeak. You have a bunch of Pletcher. You have a bunch of Gunrunner. You are... Uh, uh, you're going with the trainers and horses that you like here. And I respect that. It was tough for me not to have Mo Donegal on my top 12. Believe me, there's a lot of horses I wanted to get on there that I, I just didn't have room for. Mo Donegal being one of them. And the reason being, I, I simply like the runner up of the Remsen a little bit better. My number four is Giant Game, Matt. The only Dale Romans horse, surprisingly, who made either of our lists. Giant Game is another horse you don't have on your list. Uh, I really liked what I saw in the Breeders' Cup. He improved in his two maiden races out here in Kentucky, winning the second time out. He, of course, is from the final crop of Giants Causeway, and I always like Giants Causeway going a distance. If Giant Game can continue the progression that I saw where he made a nice wide move within the Breeders' Cup and was almost second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile coming out of a maiden race in Kentucky, uh, I think this horse has a lot of room for improvement. I like Giant Game quite a bit. Yeah, certainly uh, all the things you mentioned, and we've got some other horses that have uh, Giants Causeway in their pedigrees coming up. Yeah, that's true. My number five, Matt, uh, I should have mentioned it with your Mo Donegal number four, but th th there, there's a Pletcher Armada this year. There's no doubt that the uh, one trainer who has the most horses on our respective list is Todd Pletcher. I went with one, you went with some others. Uh, my Todd Pletcher on the list is Emmanuel. And Emmanuel, I, I just physically thought looked really, really good. Uh, he came out about a month ago at Gulfstream Park. It was a mile race. He won by just about seven lengths. Uh, he's worked really well since then. Uh, physically impressive looking horse, physically impressive uh, uh, in that maiden race. And obviously I liked what I saw in that one mile debut at Gulfstream Park a month ago. Yeah, and I, I was certainly considering uh, including Emmanuel on my list, uh, but uh, how many of these impressive debut winners from Pletcher can you include? It was interesting that Emmanuel was entered uh, to make his second start at Tampa Bay on Friday, but was scratched. I don't know what the story was there. If, if, if Todd decided that they're going to go right to a stakes race 
uh, instead or, or or what the deal was with that. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. But yes, I thought Emmanuel was very impressive also. Matt, you had Mo Donegal, the Remsen winner at number four. Who's your number five? My number five was the one that you mentioned, Brian, the uh, horse that battled with Mo Donegal down the stretch, Zandon for uh, Chad Brown, uh, a son of another one of the young sires that are impressive in Upstart. It's already back in training for Chad Brown, which is uh, which is good news. He's got two works back at Payson Park uh, down in Florida. And um, uh, Chad has already said that he's got his eye on the Holly Bull on February 5th at Gulfstream Park. Again, was very game down the stretch uh, in that battle with, uh, with Mo Donegal. So uh, certainly one of the reasons that we like that Remsen so much. Yeah, I, and I, you have Zandon higher than I do, which surprises me a little bit, but uh, I like Zandon quite a bit. Uh, coming out of a, a, a sprint debut to run as well as he did and and to come back on the rail and, and to be bumped and to keep fighting and, and to gallop out better than Mo Donegal, all of it. I liked what I saw. Chad Brown, I, I sometimes wonder about his dirt horses in the past, whether they're true mile and a quarter horses, horses like Practical Joke or Normandy Invasion. He said this horse uh, before the Remsen even is a horse who really wants to run a distance of ground and that's that's kind of enough for me and and the way he jumped up from that six for a long winning six for a long debut to a nine for a long Remsen and ran so well and was so game and so brave and galloped out well I, I like him a lot he's your number five Matt who's your number six my number six is uh, Oviat Class. Uh, um, again, another, this one's from the West Coast. Another one of those horses that I think um, has a good foundation, has experience, and has the potential to run longer um, as a son of Bernardini, trained by Keith DeSormo. Uh, um, uh, hasn't put up a lot of wins yet, but, you know, I just thought an interesting horse that maybe as the races get longer, um, could do some good things. Yeah, and I'm going to throw out a horse from almost 20 years ago. His name is Giacomo. I see some similarities between Oviat class and Giacomo. Giacomo, of course, wasn't winning a lot of races early on, but he was always finishing the race as well. Oviat class is very much like that. He's only one of six, the son of Bernardini, as you said, for Keith DeSormo, but uh, he, he hasn't gotten great paces to run at. He had trouble in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile when he basically rallied up for a, uh, a nondescript fifth, but uh, uh, between trips and, and, and lack of pace, uh, I think if he does get some pace to run at and, a, and, a, and clear sailing, he's one to watch. Um, I didn't include him on my list at one for six lifetime, but certainly horse I have, uh, I'm keeping an eye on as well. My six, Matt, is Rattle and Roll. We already talked quite a bit about the Sun of Connect, uh, waiting for him to come back. It's a shame he missed the Breeders' Cup too a little, but, uh, I think rattle and roll it deserves a place high in, on both of our lists that so you had them even higher than me. My number seven, as we talked about quite a bit already, is Zandon. Uh, Zandon, that son of uh, upstart for Chad Brown. Who is your number seven? My number seven is uh, Dash Attack, another Kenny McPeak, uh, son of Munnings. And I know how much how keen you are on Munnings uh, as a sire. What impressed me the most about uh Dash attack was that the victory that he put up at uh, Oakland Park in the Smarty Jones in a 14 horse field, Brian, most of these wins that we're talking about that uh, horses we have on our list have come in relatively uh, small fields. So uh, being able to get a win in that kind of field, and it was an interesting field uh, that that had some quality in it. Young, you know, obviously a lot of untested horses. We'll see where this one's going to go for McPeak. Yeah, yeah, there's some interesting things there, but not enough for me to include him on my list. Both of his wins came at Oakland Park. He's two for two, and he's rallied to to do it, which I generally like. But uh, Dash Attack, I. I'm not as convinced about the quality of the Smarty Jones as you are. I know it was a big field, but I don't know that it was a quality field. It was also a sloppy track. Now the, the fact that he came running and rallied impressively and clearly was best in there says something about him, but I think the competition still has to get a lot tougher for Dash Attack. He's not the Munnings. I do like Munnings as a sire, although I'm not 
100% uh, sold on Munnings as a 10 furlong sire yet. We'll see. He might be. He's that good of a, a, of a sire. Uh, but Dash Attack still has to be better horses for me to be convinced, uh, especially coming off a uh, sloppy Smarty Jones win at uh, Oakland Park. <laughs> Speaking of Munnings, the next horse on my list, Matt, is a son of Munnings. And of course, I'm speaking about Jack Christopher. Uh, th there's some questions about Jack Christopher, much like Rattle and Roll, he had to miss the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and it was kind of a late decision, uh, a minor injury that, that popped up the week of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He probably would have been the favorite, and the reason he would have been the favorite, Matt, is he was so impressive winning both a maiden debut at Saratoga and then the one-mile grade one champagne stakes at Belmont Park. I'm going to say that there was no two-year-old more impressive in 2021 that Jack Christopher. Distance and time, does he have enough time to be healthy again? The good news is Jack Christopher already arrived at the Chad Brown Barn uh, down in South Florida. So I see that as a really good sign that he has a chance, a fighting chance at least to be ready for the Derby, but uh, it's a question mark. Yeah, it's a really big question mark, Brian. I, I had Jack Christopher on my list and 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 took him off when I saw an interview with Chad Brown, where it really sounded like Chad was dubious about the chances of Jack Christopher uh, to be ready for uh, the Kentucky Derby, especially when, you know, there might be questions about distance and things like that. Chad is certainly always airs on the side of caution and with this talented horse um you know i just didn't like the way it sound with the way chad sounded about him being ready yeah it, but he got him early your dubious is my cautious and uh i think the one race chad brown wants to win is the kentucky derby jack christopher's first two races were were tis the law like if you will so I, i'm keeping them on my list matt who's your number eight Number eight, we talked about uh, Giants Causeway. Number eight for me is uh, Classic Causeway, son of Giants Causeway. We remember, we've talked about him before on shows. Uh, a nice debut winner at Saratoga, then was third in the Breeders' Futurity, second in the Kentucky Jockey Club. So uh, good performances in those races. Another one that... Uh, I think uh, has a chance to improve with maturity is already back working, has got a, 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 a time work already. So uh, we'll see how this one continues to develop for uh, Australian native Brian Lynch. Yeah, this one's very interesting to me as well. Both Giants Causeway are very interesting horses with only one win. Giant came, I mentioned before, and now you have Classic Causeway. I also have Classic Causeway on my list. He's only one of three. Giants Causeway out of a Thunder Gulch mare, out of that nice win at Saratoga. They threw him to the Wolves and he ran two pretty good races with a little bit of excuse in both the uh, Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland and then the Kentucky Jockey Club. An interesting horse to keep an eye on for trainer Brian Lynch. Number nine, Matt, who do you got? I'm back to one of those promising uh, uh, Todd Pletcher runners. I've got American Icon. Another son of Gunrunner was an open length debut winner at Gulfstream Park on December 26th. Uh, the, the dam of American Icon was twice stakes placed for Mark Cassie. So we've got uh, good bloodlines on the top and the bottom for American Icon. And uh, another one for Pletcher. We'll see how this one goes. Matt, you've got Pletcher and you've got Gunrunner in the same horse. So you are happy with your number nine. Yeah, he looked good. He wasn't uh, uh, unveiled until the day after Christmas, but he looked very good. I like the breeding as well. $400,000 purchase uh, definitely looks like a horse with a future American icon. My number nine, Matt, is a horse you cannot have on your list because he's trained by Bob Baffert. New, New Grange was actually my pick in the sham, uh, in the sham stakes recently, and, and he looked good winning. He kind of controlled the race, a uh, son of violence. He's now two for two. He's also like Cornish done it at Del Mar and Santa Anita, which I like. And, and I thought there was more under the tank for this undefeated son of violence for trainer Bob Baffert. Matt, number 10 on my list is Papa Cap. And uh, we already talked about him because you had him pretty high on your list. Who is your number 10? Number 10, another one from uh, Todd Pletcher, Dean's List. 
um, uh, is actually two for two just the other day, came back and won again um, in, uh, uh, in a six furlong race at uh, Gulfstream Park. Uh, won a stretch duel, uh, which I like to see, was really game down the stretch, uh, um, battling for, uh, for, for Pletcher. He was on the inside also, which is also good to see. Uh, with young horses. I guess I would have liked to have seen him maybe go a little bit longer, but it's hard to know what races come up in the uh, uh, condition book, especially at Gulfstream where they're running so many races uh, on the Tapita that uh, there are a relative, is a relative shortage of uh, races on the dirt down there. So we'll see where this one ends up for uh, Todd. Yeah, and I couldn't have this one on my list. Uh, I, I just think we're dealing with a sprinter here. I, I could be wrong, but I, I think this horse is a sprinter. Um, certainly a horse with a lot of potential, though. He had to fight, like you mentioned, uh, but he won by a neck on three to ten in that six furlong allowance race. The fact that Pletcher's running him in a six furlong allowance race, I, I know what you're saying about Gulfstream Park and the lack of dirt racing there. But he runs a lot of horses at Tampa and he runs a lot of horses at Gulfstream. Makes me really think that this horse uh, is, is not intended for 10 furlongs in a few months. Number 10, though, could be a very, very good one turn horse if, if I'm right. Uh, number 11 on my list, Matt, I, and I'm not sure why I couldn't get him any higher because I, I like your number eight, and that was Classic Causeway. A lot of potential for both of these Giants Causeways, Giant Game, Classic Causeway. He's my number 11. Who is your number 11? Number 11, another gun runner for me, early voting, but this one's trained by Chad Brown. Um, this one uh, 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 won his debut at Aqueduct going a mile, Brian, um, in December. Um, an impressive uh, female side where the dam of early uh, voting is a half sister of Spitestown and a full sister to a really nice runner a few years ago, IRAP. Yeah, he, he has the breeding. Uh, $200,000 yearling purchase. He wasn't a super expensive one, but he looked good uh, uh, it, at, at Aqueduct, I guess it was, that debut performance. Um, he looked good. He didn't wow me. Um, I, I, I thought about him for the list, but uh, not yet. I want to see what he does next time out. Brad, Chad Brown and another gun runner. The gun runners are everywhere. All right, Matt, I'll let you uh, finish your list first. Who is your number 12? My number 12 is Major General, a son of Constitution for Todd Pletcher. Uh, uh, won a maiden special weight at Saratoga and then came back and won the Iroquois in October at Churchill Downs. Probably would have been higher up on my list if this horse had, had been back on the work tab. Um, so I'm a little concerned at this point, but we shall see. He'll need to get back uh, 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 into serious training soon. Yeah, rattle and roll, Jack Christopher, Major General. Major General is a good pick, Matt. He's just one of those horses, I think, that's kind of floating around, kind of forgotten. Yeah. He wasn't super impressive winning that maiden race at Saratoga. And then I guess it was the Iroquois at Churchill Downs. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I, I like the way he was kind of fighting through uh, not the best of trips and was very game in that Iroquois. A son of Constitution, I think he can get batteries. Yet another Pletcher on your list. Um, yeah, I, I wonder uh, if he'll be back and ready to uh, do some damage on these derby preps to show us he's a derby horse. But a very interesting horse for you at number 12, Major General. I also like my number 12 quite a bit too, Matt. It, uh, the first, uh, surprising to say, the first Steve Asmussen trained horse that made either of our lists. His name is Epicenter. He's a son of Not This Time. I, I, I'm thinking that Not This Time is going to be a good sire. We'll see. Epicenter faded a little bit in his debut performance, but then two really strong performances. Uh, I thought he beat good horses in a mile maiden race at uh, Churchill last year. And then he uh, he got his first stakes win in the gun runner at Fairgrounds on a mile 16th. And he did it very impressively, just running away from the field late. Epicenter is a horse I think will do well on the trail to the Kentucky Derby. And who knows, maybe he is a horse that we'll be talking a lot about uh, come first Saturday in May. 
yeah, another one of those horses for Steve Asmussen, Asmussen, Kenny McPeak, a couple of the big name trainers uh, who are seeking their first Kentucky Derby win. Yeah, Epicenter, there's a lot of good horses at fairgrounds prepping for the Kentucky Derby right now, and Epicenter is high on my list there in New Orleans. Matt, I want to improve, uh, I want to uh, ask uh, everyone out there watching today, I know it's been two weeks since we did a show, we appreciate you waiting for a new horse center to uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, don't forget to turn on those notifications. I don't want you to miss another episode of Horse Center that Matt and I are always happy to put out. Matt, can I get a closing shot from you on our Kentucky Derby ranking show here in January? Always fun to talk about the Kentucky Derby and you and I will be uh, uh, on the trail all year long. Uh, bringing Kentucky Derby coverage to our Horse Center fans and friends. And of course, I want to thank our producer, Ben Wilkie, for putting together the show and wish everybody a Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks to Ben Wilkie. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the graphics. Thanks to our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Matt, uh, we'll, we'll be talking Kentucky Derby at least through the first Saturday in May and probably after that. Uh, we also have a big showdown in the Pegasus coming up later this month at Gulfstream Park. We want to talk about the Phillies a little bit too, Matt. We'll have to do something with Kentucky Oaks before too long here on Horse Center. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you uh, very soon right here on Horse Center.